Welcome to Radic Cards TV. I'm Patrick. I'm your host. This is uh, Dan Granoff, Sports Securities. How's it going? How you doing, Dan? I'm doing well. How about you? Doing well. So tell me what you got today. Uh, so I only brought one card, but it's a dual. It's like a booklet card. Uh, and honestly, is one of the very few that I own, but it's it's pretty cool. Um, I picked this up off of eBay a couple years ago, and um, as I recall, it's a 2012 exquisite football um, booklet card of John Elway and Troy Aikman with a piece of memorabilia and an autograph on both. Uh, it's numbered out of 10, um, but what makes it kind of unique is that it's their college uh, jerseys. So there's, uh, you can see there, it's got John Elway and a piece of his uh, his Stanford jersey, and then we have Trey Aikman and a piece of his UCLA jersey. So it's pretty cool that it's a uh, collegiate card. Um, I, as I recall, I believe all of this product was collegiate cards because I think Upper Deck had lost their license at that point. Right. Um, I but so. you know, I think that's the case too. They went they went pretty big with this card. I mean, and you can't ask for much of much better matchups. Uh, you know, Hall of Famers and definitely a, a Pac-12 um, matchup there. Well, it would it would have been Pac-10. Now I like that they did. I like that they got the two color patches from the college. You got the Stanford and the, yeah. the Bruins here. Now I also will see that also there's the uh, there's the uh, what do you call this the the the, the wheat mm -hmm. and and the color of Stanford colors I believe and then on the right side it's also the Stanford colors around the Bruins mm -hmm. so I was thinking from a design perspective it might have been also cool to have uh, the Bruins blue around the blue, the Bruins swatch you can kind of see it there so. I think this is kind of a neat piece, but yeah, I, 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 it's my understanding that that, that uh, um, football lost the their licensure to put on um, pro teams yeah. on their cards at this time. Yeah. Was it was it in 2012? I feel like it might have been earlier. I feel like it was later than that. Yeah, I don't remember. Say. It's been it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a it's while. It's been a while. So now, what do you think about the booklet cards? Do you like the concept? That's a loaded question. Yeah. Tell me what you, like, how does how does how does this like storage wise? They kind of suck. No matter if you store them closed or you store them open, like this one. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a tough call. Like, I think it's I think it's different. Yeah. And I wouldn't complain if I was pulling packs and I pulled something like this and it was a booklet card. You know, but I've seen some that are like ridiculous, where they're like five panels and they kind of unfold. And oh yeah, they're like forty signatures on them or something yeah. crazy. You know, I think that's taking it to a little excessive. I think it, I think it's pushing the idea of a card to something else. Right. You know, it's like it's, a piece of art. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can consider the cards pieces of art themselves. You know, but it's 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 taking it out of that realm of card. You know. Yeah. And I've said it a million times. I'm fond of standard size yeah. or smaller. Um, once we start getting bigger than standard card size, I I, uh, I start to shy away. But you know, I this was this was unique, and um, these were two of the guys that I had on my on my list of you know must have autos. Um, and I, I have uh, NFL license stuff by them. You know that that's also certified signatures. Sure. But, I didn't have anything that was side by side, and I think that the Pac-10 um, link here kind of makes it cool. You know, being being a California native, I uh, I really kind of like the California teams. And nice. Anybody that comes from them, so good stuff. Yeah. All right, so I'll take it away here. Um, I have four Thomas cards I'm going to share today. Now, as you know, I collect uh, rookie cards of Frank Thomas um, and three different. Uh, ways I've got BGS 95, the hope of all subcategories being 95, or BGS 10 if I can find it and swing it financially. And then I'll collect a PSA 10 and then a PSA authenticated autograph. So this here is my BGS 95 all sub quad tops, and I've been waiting for this for a while. This, I'm finally glad to put this in the in the, in the collection because the the, the the sub uh, subgrades for all 95s on tops for some reason is a, is, a, is a scarce opportunity. And these next three are um, uh, recent purchases all in one batch. Uh, this would be the 2004 uh, Topps Pristine. I believe this is the gold, yes, the gold refractor numbered 41. 
So I've been watching these on the bay for a while and I just couldn't pull the trigger because of the price. So luckily enough, I knew somebody who was selling one, so I grabbed this one. You want to take a look at that? Yeah, please. Uh, the next one is a... This one's pretty cool because of the deco edge as well. Yeah, that's a really nice one. And you know what's too is they have a, 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 a non-gold refractor, just a base refractor. I think it's at like mm -hmm. 49. It's like still low numbered. Right. So these are really cool. And actually, I don't yet have the regular refractor. Still looking for that nice. one. Nice. Those are really nice cards. This next one is 2007 Finest x Fractor number to 25. So I think I only need the black refractor and then I'll have all of the different versions from 2007 Finest, including the Super Fractor. Nice. So this is a really neat piece. I really like x Fractor design. Yeah, I'm partial to it as well. I like like that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the deco edge once again, but I like the gold uh, refractor. Oh yeah. And uh, that's really cool. It's really nice. Yeah, this is, was a, it's a gorgeous piece. Cool. Yeah, good stuff. And this last one was a 2005 Skybox Autographics Royal Insignia, uh, number to 25. Let's get the purple facsimile signature on there. And uh, this is a tough card again. I'd never seen this. I knew it existed, of course, but uh, until I uh, contact had one for sale. Um, I had never seen one at auction or anything. Mm -hmm. So those are really neat. I like those a lot. I think those are great cards. They're rare. Still at a time when stuff number to 25 was hard to get. Yeah. You know, um, at a time now when one of ones are a dime a dozen, this is sort of one of those things. It takes me back to a time when I think it was at the end of when to 25 cards were still considered sought after. Yeah. I think in a lot of ways they still are, but I find that the market's so diluted with stuff like this, with the prospect market, that um, kind of takes away from the significance of low-numbered cards. So, I mean, again, with the, even the X-Fractor number 25, right. this is one I knew existed but had not seen previous to this being an opportunity for me to acquire, so I was happy to get it. Of course, we've got to get them out of these uh, magnets into some top loaders, save some space. So, questions, thoughts, concerns, comments? I know there's some concerns there, right? Yeah, you know that <laughs> that top loader. No, I don't right. Know. <laughs> Make sure it's not a screw down. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Radicards TV. Uh, Till next time, enjoy collecting. Take care. Bye.